So here's what I've been able to come up with. If I turn it sideways, you're going to be able to see that I've added a section of rolled aluminum all the way around here. And that's sitting inside of a collar that I have welded on, a stainless steel collar, right to the ring that goes over the face of our combustion chamber. So we can now actually pull this off, and this will be holding our full intake nozzle and all the rest of the front end right there. We'll be able to pull that off of the engine. So I've got these couple discs. I've cut out the centers of them. The centers are the right size for the intake center here. They're going to sit down inside of our outer ring centered. And those are going to mount to this piece here and to our outer ring, giving me a nice rigid mount. So we've got one that's going to mount up here at the top. The other disc is going to mount right down at the bottom and act as the top plate to our diffuser. So all the air is going to run underneath this plate itself, which is going to be sitting right at the bottom edge of this piece here. And I'll show you that once I complete building that. So I'll actually slide up inside of there. Then I'll rivet it into place and that'll hold our intake piece right above the compressor fan the way it's supposed to and gives the air gap that we need over the diffuser plate itself. So we've got our lower discs down in there. That's the one that sits as the top plate to our diffusers. You can see the little L brackets here. I'm riveting those into place. I've got them riveted from the lower disc to the outer wall to our spacer disc and through. And then I'm riveting them down to that lower disc there. So I'm building that piece first. I'll do some fill-in work around the edges there to make sure all the air gaps are filled in and then I'll set our top disc on there. Here's a quick shot at the diffuser plate. I just got done drilling all the holes. This is where the air from our compressors goes into the combustion chamber. Finish the intake portion for the turbojet part of our engine. And you can see here what it looks like from the side. Nice little front shot to it. To build our ramjet intake, what we're going to do basically is add a bunch of reed valves to this front plate right here. They'll be on the underside of the plate. The valves themselves, the way you're seeing it now, will be flipped around on the underside. All we're going to see up here are the drilled holes that will sit underneath the valves. And what I'm making those out of is this. Is I have some spring steel reed valve from another pulse jet engine that I have. And I've been trimming those down. First of all, I go through and I drill a hole in each one of the little leaves from that. Then I trim off the leaves to look like what you see there, one of these. And I'm going to set three of them between each one of the mount points here, between my rivet points. I'm going to set three of them in. They each have their own little screw so you can remove them and replace them. What I'm doing now is finishing the afterburner section of our engine. I had to lay out a grid on here so that I could have the marks I needed to drill a bunch of holes across this. And those are quarter inch little squares, little quarter inch spacings between each one of them all the way across. And I'm going to go ahead set this down on the drill press and I'm going to go to work just popping those out. So I've completed our drill pattern on here and what we have is we have 80 1 8 inch holes and we have 40 1 16 inch holes. I've got the afterburner rolled, I've got it welded together we can slide it down inside of our collar here. That means it's removable to get to the fuel line there. Give you a quick look up into it. So what this is going to do is act similar to a gasifier with all these holes here. We're going to now build an outer case around all of this. And that outer case is going to have an airflow passing over the engine created by a Venturi from the gases and the hot exhaust from our turbojet engine inside of this. So let me show you an easy way I was able to come up with of removing our ramjet bypass tubes from the intake cowling in a way so we could still remove the intake cowling from the engine. I've created some D-rings for these and you just push them all the way out. You should be able to kind of turn this and then rotate that up. And there, our ramjet bypass tubes are now detached from our intake cowling. And that is just a piece of brass all thread that I threaded down into the sidewalls. Then I used a Dremel tool and removed all the threads so it was smooth. That way it could fit inside the opening here of our elbow. Now you can see the D-ring and how it works. So once again, you're just gonna rotate this around right onto there. Expand the D-ring out a bit so it can go on. Push the D-ring down, and then with a pair of pliers, you're just gonna kind of clamp down that D-ring so it seals on there and it won't be able to come off. Once it's on there, that makes a nice tight 
hook to it with a little bit of an o-ring or a high temperature o-ring or gasket right there we should be able to keep a nice airtight seal with that so that was a simple way that i could attach those ramjet bypass tubes down here they're actually welded on so the four pipes will always be attached to the actual ramjet portion of the engine next step of this is to start mounting our reduction thrust collars here so they're basically going to reduce down the size from our combustion chambers down a little bit to help increase our thrust so here's our primary one that we've just attached to the back of the ramjet portion of the engine and what that's going to go into is basically this collar right here is going to mount somewhere right about there we've got our secondary thrust collar now installed this air gap that you see between the primary and the secondary thrust collars here that is typically where the tertiary doors are going to go we're always going to have that air gap open to the outside of the engine the air being drawn across the engine will draw through these holes into the interior all the air coming into this air ring right here will actually be drawn from outside the engine one of the next parts of this project was to build a retracting intake spike. One of the ways I figured out how to do it was this. First of all, I designed this intake spike. Looks a lot more like the one that's actually on the SR71's intake. Um, inside of there, I have a set of rivets right up here in the front that are set up opposing each other. And what I do is I just set the spring way up in there and then I start twisting. And I'll twist it on there and those two rivets sit in between the metal sides here on the spring and I can twist it and bunch it up right into the nose here basically stopping up in there and that'll give us a spring to retract back on give us a little return pressure so when the intake pressure recedes a little bit or decreases the spring can push the intake spike back out a bit so let me go ahead and I'll slide it on there I'll twist it down and I'll put it onto the intake cavity here and I'll show you what it looks like here's what it looks like with the intake spike sitting there on the intake cavity we've got it hooked up to the spring it'll pull it right back on there and you'll notice there's a downward lean to the intake spike that's just like the original SR71's intake spike when it's at rest it's going to have a downward lean to it and that's for the same reasons basically on a spring you've got a little bit of a lean as the velocity increases pressure against the spike is going to start lifting it up and pushing it further and further back and that's going to be all the way back on our intake spike and you'll notice it straightens out it's nice and in line. The aerodynamics are going to be nice. I'm working on the outer case to our turbo ramjet engine. This is the main body of that case and I want it to be able to open up so we can get to everything. We can attach our fuel lines, oil lines, etc. And to do that, I went down to the brake and I made these uh, little L channel pieces. And there's gonna be one here on the bottom and another one that goes up here on the top. So when that folds over, they come together nicely, create a nice seal. One of the sides, we're gonna put a piece of piano hinge on for the hinge itself, but both sides will have these brackets. And what that gives us, is the two faces here that will come together right down on there that will give us a place to put a sealing material. So I have now a hinged two-part case for our engine. Here I've got, if I get the angle right, you can see this little open groove between two layers there. It would be very difficult for me to do this with one hand, but that fits right down inside of those two layers there and gives us a perfect seal. Sorry, trying to do that with one hand. There you go. So there's the outer main section of the body now ready to go. It's hinged. It's got a seal area. This is where we'll put a couple screws. And I'll undo those screws so that I can open up the case. And then we can access the engine just like this. Here's the completed intake reduction cone and the retaining ring for the front end of our engine here. And hopefully I can get this with one hand. So it's right down on there. A few screws put into this and that'll now hold our case together as well as be the intake to the front end of our engine. The next step of the project was to be able to mount our rear cone to the outer case and still make it so we could open the case up on the hinges. The way I was able to do that was this, just two simple rings. I rolled one ring and then pressed that in on the inside edge of the outer case. And then to make it seamless, I rolled a second ring and then put that down over the top of the interior ring. And then left just one eighth of an inch of a ring 
edge sticking out over right here between the inner and the outer rings and what that does is hides the edge of our cone down inside that that little bit of a lip inside of there that way there's no way the air can grab it we're going to screw the cone down to this piece with these little tangs i still got to put four more in there there'll be eight all together and then here you'll notice on the bottom side there's rivets on both the main case and the outer part here then when I flip it over to the section that has our hinge so the bottom part here has no hinge and then the top is going to be screws on the part that opens on our main case here and then rivets obviously on the part in the back just our air lift just to make it a nice smooth edge